illegal slap is flat. Open hand is shot to the side of the face. Two competitors basically stand across from one another and slap each other. They're not allowed to protect themselves or flinch or move away from the slap. It's purely standing across from your competitor and trading slaps until either all the rounds end or one of the competitors is just unable to continue because of being concussed or injured or, or something else. In recent years, viral clips of the shocking and brutal sport of slap fighting have made their way from Eastern Europe to the U.S. Now, in the UFC back show Power Slap, the controversial sport has made its way to American airwaves. Red has chosen right to right. I'm not a fan at all of slap fighting, and I wish that it hadn't been permitted to start taking place in the United States because essentially you're not allowed to protect yourself. So the difference with a sport like boxing or mixed martial arts, the referees actually tell the competitors before the fight, protect yourself at all times. They can try and deflect punches. They can try and get out of different submission attempts. And so it feels like it's a little bit more even and more of a true kind of competition rather than in slap fighting, if you flinch, if you try to move out of the way, if you do anything to protect yourself, you lose. And so it basically takes away all of the defensive possibilities to protect yourself. The biggest danger is by far concussions, so traumatic brain injuries. And you're gonna have that danger in other combat sports, of course. And so I don't think it's safe to say that just the idea of slapping somebody is more dangerous than boxing or punching, but it's more again that fact that you can't defend, you can't protect yourself. And basically the goal is to knock somebody out and give somebody a concussion. People don't realize there's a lot of risk for other facial injuries. So a lot of times there's, you know, you're striking bones on the face where you can suffer facial fractures. The competitors actually are required to put cotton in their ears because if you forcibly slap somebody with an open hand over an ear, the increase in the amount of pressure inside the ear can actually rupture somebody's eardrum. And then the other side of it is, of course, when somebody does get slapped and knocked out, they often fall backwards and potentially landing on their head, suffering some other sort of injury. Doctors worry that the full long-term effects of the brutal blows will be difficult to determine for years to come. Concussion can be life-altering. I think the challenge right now with concussion research and things like CTE is we don't have a great sense of how many concussions or how many head injuries, how big of a head injury. We don't really know the dose in terms of what will lead somebody to be at risk of something like chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which can absolutely be life altering. And so a good way I've heard it described is, you know, we it's like we have money in our bank account and every time you get a head injury, you're withdrawing some money from the bank account. The problem is we don't know how much money is in our bank account. And so for some people that might be a lot of money, they might do just fine. They might never notice any real long-term issues or effects, but for other people, it could be life altering in terms of issues with memory, issues with you know mood disorders, which can obviously carry over and affect the rest of your life.